structure, we've tried to sort of expand the format of what our traditional BMC meeting looks like today. But um, I also suspect that a part of it may be that we have a very impressive lineup of, of leadership from both state and federal, and, uh, and also from UVM as well. So uh, you know, maybe the fact that they're probably one of those people are either directly or indirectly our boss may have something to do with that attendance um, But But also, um, I, so, so I do, I want to thank them for coming. It really is unusual, I think, to be able to pull all of these, these players together, um, clear their schedules to come here and spend some time with us. But I also want to thank uh, specifically uh, John Erickson and Mike Snyder and David Mears, who is not here yet, um, uh, for having some meetings with us at the Rubenstein School over this past year. The faculty at Rubenstein got together with the commissioners um, of the, the various departments in the a and the year to talk about how we could maybe uh, collaborate more or more closely connect our organizations. And, and in a time like we're in now where people are stretched more and more thin and obviously budgets are, are also stressed, there's really, I think, even more reason for us to find those synergies so that we can increase both the scope of the work that we do but also the impact that that has. And so there was obviously a lot of enthusiasm around the room when we were having these meetings. But um, what, why I specifically mentioned these meetings is because it was at those meetings that really sort of the concept for this expanded DNC meeting was born. Uh, and that's because one of the things that I noticed is that uh, being relatively new to Vermont, I mean five years, that certainly doesn't qualify me even close as a Vermonter. Um, but what, what I was surprised at is how much collaboration there already is across our organizations. There really is quite a rich history of us all working closely together. Um, and the VMC is a perfect example of that. I mean, I just yesterday I went through the, the website and I, I went through the list of our, our formal <coughs> collaborators that are part of what makes VMC what it is. And there are over 170 individuals listed as formal collaborators within the Vermont Monitoring Co-op. What was maybe more surprising to me is that those individuals represent 50 different organizations. I don't even think I could come up with 50 different organizations doing work in the state of Vermont. So, so that was really impressive, including a whole uh, host of academic institutions, uh, private research institutions, outreach and education organizations. Obviously, the state and federal agencies were really heavily represented there. But it just really shows that the framework exists, right? We already want to work together. We have a group of people who are committed to working on Vermont's forest and ecosystem. But even though that framework is there, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't really know what a lot of you are doing. <laughs> I and mean, I like to think that being you know, a part, at first a part of the advisory committee, and, and now the PI for the VMC, that I would really be connected. But even I don't always know exactly what people are doing. And there's a lot of really interesting work going on out there. I mean, I hear about it anecdotally, and I go, oh, I wish I'd known about that. I would have loved to have added this component to that study, or I would have loved to look at that data, or did you think of this? So we're hoping that the format for this meeting can do that, right? Now, the idea was to cast a broader net, try to bring in more people who are working across Vermont in forest and ecosystems, try to include some of the social components of this that we haven't traditionally focused on, right? How do these integrate? How do they relate? And then invite people to come and share what they're doing. So that's sort of the idea for the afternoon session, right? What, what are you doing that's of interest that you might want to share with other people? But then, and this is where the fun is really going to begin, the active participation that we're asking from all of you in these afternoon breakout sessions. Right? We want to know from our stakeholders, our constituents, from the people doing the work, what should we be doing? Right? And how can we facilitate making that happen? Let's not just talk about it. We have an organization in the VMC that is set up to do this type of work. What do you want us to do to facilitate those conversations up front? Not just at the end, like you know, most professional meetings, we go and we hear about work that's been done and been published, and that's great, and hopefully we can build on that. But what if we started talking up front in designing new projects and writing new proposals for funding? You know, what if we were able to cross our, our disciplines, bring in new expertise? How much more could we accomplish? So hopefully in this afternoon session, we'll actually get brilliant ideas from all of you that we haven't you know, thought of already, and actually use that to move forward. So I do hope that um, as many of you as possible can stay for those sessions. I know the tendency at meetings is to watch the presentations and then go home early or, or go to the bar. Um, but hopefully we can convince some of you to stay, to stick around a little bit longer. But because this is a new format for us, um, we are looking for feedback as well because we do this every year and we would like to see 
see this actually grow maybe into a different room, so we're not quite as, as stuffy as we are here. But we would like to see more and more people included in that network, working together as part of a larger team, rather than just sort of an individual partnerships. I think we're pretty good at partnerships, MOUs, collaborative agreements, we do a good job of that, but can we pull together more diverse teams? Um, so that's sort of the, the goal for this meeting today. Um, one thing you will notice sort of along those lines of how can we connect more is hopefully you each got this brief little survey um, from Judy when you checked in. Just an idea, um, something we're working on uh, with Brett Bow, maybe trying to pull in some other organizations as well. Would you be willing, be willing to be a part of um, sort of an eco news newsletter? What should that look like? Who would it go to? What would you like it to include? So any feedback on that would be great. But then there's a big blank spot on the back. You can write anything you want, like, boy, this meeting really should have had so-and-so, or, oh, this is brilliant. Let us know, because obviously any feedback we will uh, take very seriously. Okay, so, so thank you all for coming. Um, before, before we do uh, jump right into the meeting, though, we wanted to take a moment um, to recognize the legacy of Hub Lokoman, who passed away earlier this year. I know that there have been memorial services uh, for him, but we thought that it was particularly appropriate to commemorate him here because it was really Hub's work that, that provided the justification and the impetus to form the Vermont Monitoring Co-op, right? So that, his forest health work is really one of the main reasons that we're here at all. Um, and Dr. Tim Perkins has graciously agreed to come and just speak for a few moments about Hub's legacy. Uh, Tim Perkins is the director of the Procter Maple Research Center and has had the opportunity to work directly with Hub on some of his uh, work on Camel's Hump. So if you would join me in welcoming Tim Perkins. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you and good morning. It's an honor to be able to say a few words in remembrance of Dr. Hub Wolverman morning. Um, I'm not going to go through a long list of Hub's accomplishments for, for many, but uh, primarily because many of us here actually had the pleasure of knowing Hub as a teacher, as a mentor, colleague, advisor, or just as someone to call if you had a question about a natural area somewhere in Vermont or, or throughout the Northeast. Uh, however, not everyone probably realizes the breadth of Hub's work in terms of uh, what it is that the Vermont Monitoring Cooperative uh, has become over the years. The mission of Vermont Monitoring Cooperative is to provide information needed to understand, manage, and protect Vermont's forested ecosystems in a changing global environment. From the time that Hub started here, that is exactly what he was doing. In terms of understanding Vermont's forested ecosystems, during his career, Hub produced several key reports describing the natural areas throughout the state, as well as evaluating areas for inclusion uh, as registered national landmarks for the National Park Service. He and his graduate students sought to understand the natural world by scientifically chronicling the plants soils, and climate of the Green Mountains. Much of this work would go on to form the basis for numerous long-term interdisciplinary studies on the effects of the changing global environment on our forests. In particular, how along with his uh, colleagues and graduate students and undergraduate students and employees and scientists from numerous other organizations, state and federal agencies, spent well over a decade examining the effects of acid rain on our northern forests. And Hub's work was among the earliest to warn that anthropogenic pollution originating from a long distance was having profound influences on our function and structure of the forests in the Northeast. His studies were among the first to look at the importance of cloud moisture in New England, the high elevation forests, and the chemistry uh, of, of that cloud water. During this time, Hub's work through the Botany Department led to some of the first coordinated environmental monitoring efforts at the UVM Procter Maple Research Center as a way to understand the function of the forests. <coughs> this work uh, attracted a great deal of sustained grant funding from a large number of different agencies and foundations, 
from monitoring the forest health. And I, I'm sure we all wish we could emulate that. Uh, and it garnered a great deal of attention from other researchers, from state and federal land managers, and from the public over quite a long period of time. Some of that work and then offshoots of that work are continuing to this day. 2015 will be the 50th anniversary of the first uh, surveys on Camel's Hall, and we will be uh, conducting those surveys during that time. His work on understanding and interpreting and communicating about the natural world continues to the renowned field naturalist program here at UVM. In terms of managing natural resource areas and forest lands, Hub dedicated a great deal of effort uh, working and advising local, Vermont, federal, national, and international organizations in, on their activities. <coughs> He played critical roles in several state of Vermont review and advisory boards and in a large number of environmental and conservation organizations. The short list of these organizations in which he served on the board of directors includes the Green Mountain Audubon Society, Nature Conservancy, Vermont Natural Resources Council, Vermont Bird and Botanical Club, Conservation Society of Southern Vermont, the list just continues on and on. Clearly, Hub understood the importance of managing these sites for the benefit of everyone. The final component of the VMC mission is protection. Throughout his conservation efforts and the work with the National Park Service, Hub played an important role in preserving forest resources and the natural resources uh, that we have from a variety of threats. But he's more widely recognized in his efforts to protect the forest by sounding the alarm about acid rain. His speaking out about this threat uh, and his continual efforts to engage and educate everyone from grade school students through politicians uh, leads part of what is what part of eventually led to the 1990 amendment to the Clean Air Act, which for the first time authorized the EPA to control acid depositions and several other toxic air pollutants. Since that time, we've seen significant improvements in regional air quality in many ways, and recent research seems to indicate high elevation forests are in the early stages of recovery. That's, that's an amazing legacy. Up mentioned one time uh, in, in the context of teaching that it isn't difficult to lead. You simply need to get out front and stay there. And, and really that is what he did his entire life. So as we sit here today, learning about all the wonderful activities of the Vermont Monitoring Cooperative, it's worth taking just a little time uh, to reflect back upon the important contributions of all of those who came for us, including Dr. Hub Vogelman, who sought to fulfill the same mission that we are doing today, to understand, to manage, and protect our forests and ecosystems. Thank you.
oh my God, four years. <laughs> and, uh, and it was one of the most uh, fun courses that I took in, in, my, uh, in my four years at UVM. And, it, and being engaged and out in the field, it was a summer class, so I got to take it with teachers, and I was just an undergraduate, and, and he just made it so much fun. I still have some of my specimens in my, my plant press in, at my house. One of, the, one of the studies, one of the monitoring efforts that he did that I don't think is known by a lot of people was the work that he did on his rural road in the town of Jericho. Over the years, he used to monitor the trash along his stretch of road in the town of Jericho. And the findings from that were that Budweiser is also the king of litter. <laughs> 